Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Prepare to be shaken and stared, no who's back. With or without the lockdown, the conversation goes on. We'll be hooking up with Uche to get the download on WhatsApp information in this tech and information age in the midst of COVID-19. America is all for kicking out the foreign and embracing the traditional. It seems to be saying the gods are to blame. Chuka is an advocate for Nigerian healthcare system. Is he a lone voice crying out in the wilderness? Ekene says that such a thing as too close for comfort, and perhaps she had enough of the lockdown experience. I'll be setting things in motion by saying to my African leaders, copy and paste, just won't cut it. If you are watching this at home on lockdown, then I have good news for you. You are in the right place to be part of this big conversation after the break. The solution to the problems of Africa lies in Africa, but African leaders prepared to look inward for a solution to that problem. Your guess is as good as mine. African can't co conquer COVID-19 with copy and paste. That's my topic. Facing a fast-changing situation with great uncertainty and so many unknown, most governments around the world resorted to a similar approach to contain the COVID-19 pandemic, what I call the Chinese approach of lockdown. And as suspected, most African countries like Nigeria, South Africa, Ghana, Rwanda, Kenya reacted quickly and decisively to curb the potential influx and spread of the COVID-19 virus by hurriedly copying and pasting the Western approach of a lockdown. But kudos must be given to the government of Tanzania for her unique approach to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. The president, John Magofoli, refused duplicating policies implemented in advanced countries as they have adopted a strategic approach that considers the best of its political economy and well-being of the society. With 32 COVID-19 confirmed cases, three deaths and five recoveries, Tanzania, unlike other African countries, did not lock down businesses and its citizens. The country did it also close its border, but initiated strict testing and 14 days compulsory quarantine to all arrivals. And to date, they are doing well. The World Bank has given multiple reasons why these copy and paste economic policies implemented in sub-Saharan Africa should be different from those adopted in Western countries and some middle-income countries. Firstly, informal employment in main, is the main source of employment in Sub-Saharan Africa, accounting for 89.2% of all employment, according to International Labour Organization report in 2018. Excluding agriculture, informal employment accounts for 76.8% of total employment, respectively. Informal, also, informal workers lack benefits such as health insurance, unemployment insurance, and paid leave. Most informal workers, particularly the self-employed, need to work day to day to earn a living and pay for their basic household needs. There are no social securities. A prolonged lockdown will put all of these at risk. Additionally, the majority of workers hired are in a precarious situation and most of these jobs are temporary and with low remuneration and do not offer social securities. And so these workers are at a greater risk of injury and heal health. Lastly, small and medium-sized enterprises, what we call SMEs, an important driver of growth in economic across the region, account for up to 90% of all businesses and represent 38% of the region's GDP. Access to finance is one of the main challenges facing SME in normal times, with majority of them lacking the finance needed for growth, not to talk of a lockdown. 
So prior to COVID-19, the financial gap of SMEs in the region was estimated at $331 billion, according to International Finance Corporation report in 2018. Even after the negative economic impact of the COVID-19 outbreak, an interest rate is cut in several African countries in line with monetary policy action around the world. That will be unable to bounce Africa that is already lagging behind back to prevalence as a result of reduced labor supply fueled by the lockdown, followed by the weak monetary transmission in African countries because of underdevelopment in the domestic financial market. I will therefore advocate that African leaders should adopt a homegrown strategy to combating the COVID-19 pandemic against the backdrop that African economies still need to design policy pathway to achieve sustainable growth, economic diversification, and inclus inclusiveness, especially given that economic sustainability of African countries depend on the ability to transform their depleting stock of wealth from natural resources into other reproducible capital assets, such as physical capital infrastructure and human capital. If we don't solve our problem with our African methodology, nobody will assist us. Yeah, I was speaking with the designer in Kenya, and she was pointing out the fact that now that the borders are closed, they can't import foreign. Yeah, so this is actually a positive thing because she knows that the people in Kenya like their own home fashion. But now the pressure is on to generate more. I know people are on lockdown, but they still want to wear good clothes. So actually, the challenge for them now is that they should rise to that, uh, do you say, the gap, to fill the gap. So I'm trying to just, you know, latch onto what you were saying and say, this is actually a positive development for a lot of people, especially Africa, because for, for the longest time we've been on the back end, we've been playing catch up. But now it's almost like everywhere has been put on pause. So we can reset, and, and I also take something that Emeka said in the previous last week's advocacy, where he was sort of talking about, you know, it's about confidence building. People will yeah. invest in your market if they feel confident in it. So a lot of it now is resetting our own mindset to realize that we can stand on our own. We don't need to lean on what is said. We can now in, look at our, what we have in our hands because we don't need to look outside. Our borders are closed. Everyone's borders are closed. You can't go outside. What can we do with what we have? So we need to have people who are ready to think. We need a renaissance on thinking where you just start from, from scratch, almost like virgin thinking. And don't reference anything outside. Let's just take it that this is our own community. What can we do for ourselves, even if we have to go back to start again? And, and that's what we're looking for now, you know. Yeah, yeah but, but um, cool, cool. um can I come in? Yeah. Um, okay. okay, so yeah, can I, everything you said is actually correct. Um, everything you said is correct. Um, I Even like in places like America, where because of this uh, COVID-19, um, you know, the populace discovered that a lot of their manufacturing had been outsourced to China. Um, I think everybody needs to now get to a point where we should want to produce for ourselves because we don't want to be caught um, relying on another country to provide things that we desperately need. Like look at the masks, look at the ventilat ventilators and all that. Um, and so I totally agree with you that yes, this COVID-19 has definitely brought it home to people that, you know, it is time that we rely on ourselves. We, we should you know, make things ourselves, and we shouldn't really rely on anybody else. Um, I've heard rumors that once um, the American economy restarts, that the first thing they're going to do, or the main thing they're going to do is buy American. They're no longer going to buy uh, whatever else they were buying. They're all going to patronize American goods. So that's going to be their quickest way to rebuild their economy. I think it's something we certainly should be looking at. Interesting. Uh, we don't have infrastructure for anything, do we, really? <laughs> well, that's the point. <laughs> so how do we, what are we harnessing here without the right leadership? Um, because you have to have people who are ready to do what Uche is saying. They have to be ready to make Nigeria. It's, it's a mindset, and it's not, it, I, I don't think that mindset is, uh, is here yet. And I know that I, I last in the last episode I talked about um, about uh, you know the need to that we have to make a conscious effort to change, and that's what Twitch is saying really. So are we going to change? Are we going to change our, our, our elected leaders and ourselves so that we we can actually make Nigeria and buy Nigeria and whatever else follows from there? It's actually yeah, actually that simple. Uh, Emeka wants to come in. Tough. 
talked about this uh, previously, uh, last episode. We, we, let's understand the nature of the beast here. Um, the nature of the beast we have flows from a, you know, a lack or a failure of imagination. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and that, that for me is really the, the where issue the poverty here, starts, where the poverty yes. starts. Mm. Poverty, again, to re-echo what Chuka said, uh, what, what we're saying, it's in the mind. <laughs> We have, uh, we have an attitude and a complex, which has become a complex, to see our limitations or the way we are as, lim as limiting, you know, yeah. and, and, and more willing to accept things that come from outside. outside. Yeah. And, and as those things, they, they, they become the panacea to yes, a problem, to, to, to a problem. problem which is intrinsically different from, from, from that which is um, um, either, either Western. So, and so we have a mismatch. And so we, we're constantly trying to take medication or a system that's external and trying to fit it here, and it's yeah. not working. Yeah. Yeah. And that, oh. that creates a friction that we see uh, every day. So oh, we have to address it from a, using yes. local systems. Oh, unfortunately, um, maybe we'll have to continue this advocacy you know, yeah. in the next episode uh, so that we don't uh, copy and paste. <laughs> <laughs> and um, like I said, copy and paste will not work where intellect and initiate, initiative are needed. After the break, Uche too has something to say about copy and paste and social media misinformation. Just wait for that.